some people, wiser and more knowledgeable than myself, have said many remarkable things. One of these, according to us, is that, listen, the more the circle of knowledge grows, the wider the circle of what one has to know also grows. In other words, the brighter the light of knowledge, the longer the shadow of ignorance it casts. This phrase applies extensively to the two areas of what you are about to see. The oceans, blue as they are, deep as they go, expansive as they are, remain one of the most mysterious features of the earth as we know it. So let's hold our breath and dive into this mysterious world. Our first sea creature is a sun making machine and also the largest herbivorous fish in the Atlantic Ocean. This is the power fish. Marine scientists estimate that there are over 80 species of this magnificent fish. The parrot fish has been known to change its sex and color throughout in its lifetime. Using its unique teeth, it feeds on seal algae on the coral reefs where it resides. In the process of feeding, it is known to soil coral reefs and rocks, which it poops, resulting in the sandy beaches which we enjoy. An unusual adaptation that most parrotfish share is the ability to change sex from female to male. Most species live in groups of around 40 members, which groups usually consist of a harem of females led by just one breeding male, the super male. When a super male dies, one of the females in the harem will change sex to replace him and become the new harem master. This gender bending may involve some dramatic color change. In this context, human beings can learn to show opportunity and leadership without any discrimination on the basis of sex and gender. Of the roughly 1,000 animal species, only 10 host clownfish. Female clownfish tend to be more aggressive than their male counterparts. They usually display a strong social hierarchy based on size, which hierarchies function as a basis for their breeding. The clownfish are all born males. Each group of the clownfish will be consisted of many males and one dominant female. The second in command in the school is usually the largest and most aggressive male. Only he gets to mate and breed with the female. The male does most of the egg sitting until they hatch. Furthermore, the male usually finds the eggs to increase the chances of developing successfully. In these circumstances, the male will usually eat the eggs that are infertile or ones that are damaged by fungus. In case the dominant female dies, then the second male in hierarchy usually turns into the dominant female of the group. The new reproductive female then increases in size and will then choose a breeding partner among the largest males available in the group. At the same time, other members of the group move up one in the pecking order. The two will pair off and breed together until something happens to one or the other, at which point the circle begins once again. Ever met a creature totally made out of legs? See how beautiful this creature is. It has long legs. Beautiful, some may say. Other cheeky ones may choose to say the sea spider has legs for days. The sea spider is an animal which consists almost entirely out of legs. But do not be misled by the name, for sea spiders are not true spiders. Sea spiders have guts that run throughout their body, including their legs, through which they used to breathe. Sea spiders breed by laying eggs. These eggs are laid by the female, who has a more diminished role thereafter. 
since it is actually the male who takes over the step of ensuring that the eggs do hatch. The male has egg carrying structures known as ovigers. To pick out the eggs, the male binds them together and sticks them to its body by secreting a glue-like substance. The legs are used for holding and carrying eggs. Interestingly, males typically carry these eggs until they are nearly ready to hatch. However, in some species the adult male will not drop the eggs before they hatch and it will transport these young sea spiders in its ovages for only a short time, keeping them safe from the obvious dangers of the open ocean. It is clear that sea spiders have devised a unique model of sharing responsibilities between the two sexes in the breeding process. This is arguably way more advanced than common practice in human beings. In this sense, human beings can also devise a similar model of role sharing between men and women. This would ensure that both parents are fully involved in raising their young one. The Dragon Moray Eel These intimidating creatures are found in many parts of the tropical Indo-Pacific. They have elongated mosaic bodies of red, yellow, black, orange and white markings all over the entire bodies. The Dragon Moray Eel remains one of the most colorful of all known species of eel. Their faces are the most intimidating features of their bodies. They have incredibly large mouths and sharp teeth coupled with what appears like horns atop their heads. Have a look at these magnificent creatures. The Dragon Moray Eel is a carnivore that eats live foods of shrimp, fish, crustaceans, clams, or crabs and are bottom dwellers that inhabit rocky formations that they use for housing and for hunting. Indeed, a lot can be said about all the colorful and intimidating features about the dragon moray eel. However, the species' ability to spontaneously change its sex remains even more intriguing to marine scientists. Usually, this occurs as a result of lack of sufficient members of the opposite sex in any given group. The last animal to feature in this series is the Emperor Penguin. We have to travel to one of the coldest parts of the world, the Antarctica. Here, we find the only species that are known to nest in winter. No other species are so perfectly adapted to survive in the most extreme and remote place on Earth than the Emperor Penguin. Emperor Penguins are the biggest of the 18 species of penguins found today. Emperors are uniquely adapted to survive these harsh conditions. After mating, the female Emperor Penguin lays a single egg, which egg is then incubated by the male in a special pouch on the top of its feet until it hatches. As soon as the egg is safely with the male, the female heads to the open ocean to feed. Although they move slowly on land, these birds are not only strong and fast swimmers, they are Olympic divers. They can dive to overwhelming depths of at least 1,700 feet, which is about 500 meters in search of food. Interestingly, incubation in the emperor penguins lasts between 32 and 68 days, during which time the male fasts and the females return to the sea to forage. The larger the egg, the longer the period the male has to sit on it. It is in this period when the males and the eggs can be found fighting the harsh weather conditions and incubating their eggs in huddles. The males keep their eggs on top of their feet, covered with a blanket of feathers, skin and fat for two months in the dead of the winter. During this time, he does not feed and huddles with other nearby males to conserve body heat he may lose a whopping 50% of his total body mass. The dual patrol of the penguins are a clear depiction of the benefits of shared responsibilities between both males and females. Maybe that's something that human beings should learn. In summation thereof, from all the creatures we've reviewed in this series, there are clearly enough examples from which human beings can learn some pivotal lessons about gender and sex. This is especially so within the current context of numerous controversies about gender and sex. Without question, we as human beings do not have the ability 
to change sex or gender like some of these marine animals. However, we can learn from the situations in which they change sex or gender. From these populations, one can learn parental care, leadership, importance of balance, and sharing responsibilities. For when in confusion, which is the better book to read from than the edifying pages of nature? From nature, we can at least lay to rest arguments about gender and sex. From nature, man can somehow face better questions and mysteries concerning gender and sex. From nature, and specifically these amazing gender benders of the ocean, maybe, just maybe, we can objectively discuss these controversial issues with a view to finding pragmatic solutions thereof. From nature, from ocean life, from us to you, happy ocean day.